It's our pleasure to introduce you to the AgGrad 30 Under 30. These are young professionals who still in their 20s are already excelling in their careers, giving back to their communities, and advancing the industry of agriculture. They come from all over the United States and are the future leaders of agriculture, ag tech, and agribusiness. These are the AgGrad 30 Under 30. Casey Call is the head grower for Plenty Unlimited, an industry-leading vertical farm in California. He exemplifies our agricultural production category by finding new ways to grow plants indoors using automation. Their futuristic-looking farms experiment with ways to produce more food per square foot close to the consumer. Casey shares some of the experience he's brought with him from his upbringing in traditional agriculture. Agriculture requires you to be thinking about your crop all the time, right? It's, it's one of those things that as I'm trying to build a grow team at Plenty now, so we're trying to bring on new people so that we can deploy them to the new farms. And one of the things that is just an intangible about agriculture is that clock that's going on in your head all the time as a farmer where you're just thinking what's going on out there all the time. So that is totally transferable. It's it has never skipped a beat in my mind. I've said it to a couple people and maybe this will resonate with you. I think. My dad, as a field farmer, he worries about all the things he can't control. And as an indoor farmer, I worry about all the things I can control. Casey grew up as a fifth generation farmer in New York, where his family mainly produces root crops. I asked him what led him towards a more unconventional avenue in ag. Growing up in that environment, uh, you know, obviously I was involved in the, in the daily farm operations. Um, I think one of the things that really caught my attention early was, you know, agronomy and the science side of things and just how hard that was to really do accurately and precisely at scale. Um, and so, you know, I was pretty fortunate just the timing of my, you know, college career and, and my career is, is this ag tech and ag, you know, precision ag kind of manifested. Um, it was really in line with all the things that I had seen growing up and wanted to help the farm get better with. And so it kind of felt like a natural fit to pursue that. So what exactly do we mean by vertical farming? And what is the main objective of Plenty's process? Our endeavor is, is to control all the conditions. So we don't use any sunlight. Um, we use all LEDs. We do use renewable energies and batteries in order to power those. But we're all completely indoors. We're trying to control all the variables. Um, and so if you do that, uh, what we're aimed at is, you know, maximizing that yield potential um, while also selecting varieties that taste really good and are really nutritious for people, right? Because we can, we can plop these factories down 10 minutes from any city center and we can deliver really good fresh vegetables all the time. Now, what we're trying to do at Plenty is automate a lot of that operational expense such that our economics makes sense over time. And the way you do that is through automation, right? So we have more robots doing that work than we have people doing that work. And so eventually you always have that large capital expense, but eventually um, if our automation works well enough, you, you can depreciate that operational expense over time. Casey's working conditions are obviously way different than a conventional farm, but how is the thought process different? we're trying to maximize your output per square foot right all that infrastructure costs money um so if we can if we can control where the where the crop's going to fruit and we can maximize um, our photosynthetic input to that relative bud point output um that's what we're trying to do so we talk a lot about like how much material we're producing per meter squared of a facility right per kilowatt hour of energy that you put into a metered squared of a capex built facility how much output are you getting uh, and so if you can map all of that output, um, and you know, we're getting into a little bit of the plenty theory here though, but right. you know, you're kind of meshing at this point where a plant really, you know, a plant to all of us in agriculturalists, you know, I'm in love with plants. I love them. I know they're alive, biological living things. At the same time, you can, you can work with them as their type of an equation, right? You know, so if you have these inputs, it's a, there's this, there's this process or production unit. Um, and here are these controllable outputs, right? Controlling all of the farming variables and having robots do the work sounds great, but there also is a downside. You know, it, it, that's that's it though. There is no one to blame, right? So if I get, the, you know, if, if the pH is wrong, the pH is, it's not the machine's fault, right? The machine just does what I tell it to do. It's as smart as I make it. 
yeah, so, you know, there's there's some pressure there. Now, I mean, the, the flip side of that is that when it works well, man, you can really grow a beautiful crop and you feel really good about it at the end of the day. As vertical farming grows in popularity, there are other companies entering the space. What makes Plenty unique? There's a few fundamental things that make us different. Obviously, if, if, if you Google us and you go on our website, you'll see that our towers are actually vertical. Um, so we're not actually, we're not stacked horizontal trays. There's actually a vertical pole. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a big fundamental difference. And we do that for density reasons. Um, and if you think about thermodynamics, right, you're piping light in, right? And you're piping temperature in, you're putting all that in. Well, how do you get it out after the plant does, uh, takes what it needs and transpires and does all the things that plants do? How do you deal with all that moisture uh, inside a facility, you know? And so working with thermodynamics really helps us in that endeavor. If you just took a, a, a top-down view of how Plenty staffs its employees, we look different than other indoor farms in that we, you know, we got a hundred and some odd engineers. A third of our company is engineering, right? You know, I mean, oh, and if you talk about software and you talk about controls, you know, half our company's engineering. You're really an engineering firm with an operation arm. Hmm. Um, you know, and I think that's different than some of the other approaches that have been taken in the past. You, you got to have a background in science. You got to understand what scale is, and then you got to have an interest in indoor agriculture. And so that's, we've, we've found people through that. Listening to Casey describe their growing process, there was one question I just had to ask him. What's it like to have robots as your coworkers? The first thing that I'll tell you, man, is they, uh, they need a lot of supervision. Um, <laughs> so the thing about robots, as a human being, when you approach a problem, you don't understand. I didn't understand how much you take for granted in when you look at something, you've already solved half the problem. Right, you, you know not to tear that plant in half because that's gonna be a bad out. Well, a robot doesn't know that, right? So you gotta teach it all these things. Now, I'll say that, I, the other thing I'll say is, is you know, the people that I work with at Plenty are just extraordinarily talented. Um, that's been just a really huge boost for me. The depth of talent and technical aptitude um, for some of these, these folks is just incredible. So. You know, it's really cool when you get to go, you know, you go into a room and you whiteboard a solution and you say, you know, I want to transplant like this, you know, and you sit down with a group of engineers, you come in back a week later and they've got a robot doing it. You know, it, just to see it come to life like that is pretty, pretty cool. Thanks so much to Casey Call for sharing your story and being a part of the 2020 AgGrad 30 Under 30. Stay tuned for more episodes and more winners coming soon.